Alrighty guys, let's get started with this um, top water project. So uh, I've already pre-cut the overall shape of the lure and uh, I've used this template to um, help me phrase out the outlines. And I usually always do that, you know, just doodle something on paper and add some details on it, you know, just to help me get a overall sense of the lure that I'm going to be doing. And usually the rest will follow as I'm carving it. And um, you probably noticed that I, since I started to taper the head of the lure, I, I actually don't have any anything else uh, but a center line drawn on the on the lure. And some guys tend to use some sort of guidelines when they do this, but. I guess I'm somewhat of a experienced carver already that I don't really have the need for that anymore. And I just do it with uh, just by eye, eye alone. And the wood I actually chose for this project is uh, a hardwood called maple, which is extremely hard to carve and Really, my knife isn't this dull, it's actually razor sharp. And yeah, you kind of have to be careful when dealing with hardwoods, and especially if you carve like me, which is the irresponsible way. <laughs> and if you actually want to save your thumbs, and fingers you should do it this way around always carve out from your fingers and not towards them but I guess I'm hardcore that way <laughs> or something and uh, yeah as you can see I'm not really taking huge chunks out of the wood uh, partly because it's so goddamn hard, but also it's much more easier for me to get a uh, symmetrical shape. Mm, I think I'm still not done here. Okay, I'm gonna start to um, sand the lure with a sandpaper, which is Grid 60, which is uh, actually pretty hardcore for most lure projects, but I guess it's kind of justifiable since this is pretty tough wood to carve anyway. You know, I just alternate on each side and make sure that it's nice and symmetrical, just like I was doing while I was carving it with a knife. I think I'm gonna take a little bit out from here still. So, um, usually I always um, pre-cut a slot for the, for the wire before I actually start to shape the lure any further than this. One thing is uh, because it's much more easier for you to get a lure to stay in one place in the device. And the other thing is that as I'm doing a uh, carved details on, on the head and especially on the throat. Um, it pays off sometimes to have a pre-cut slot before that because, you know, sometimes you might end up um, cutting your details, which is uh, never nice and will make you lose your marbles. <laughs> 
and as you can notice I'm not really uh, sewing it that deep I'm just you know like I said before I, I'm making a pre-cut for the slot uh, which I'm gonna be cutting on later okay so next I'm gonna start to carve the overall shape and I usually always start with you know just taking um, the most of with a with a knife and then just moving on to sandpaper later on and uh, for this particular lure I think I'm gonna go for um, somewhat of, of a, a teardrop or a raindrop type of cross section that's usually pretty good for uh, top water lures it's either that or um, completely rounded uh, shape or an oval that works also And like always, I don't really have any kind of uh, uh, traced outlines for how deep I should be cutting. Since this is um, a demonstration project, I don't really need to be that accurate, I don't think. And I probably wouldn't be doing that anyway, since I, like I said before, I, I've done this quite a few times so already so got no need for that and I usually always when I uh, start to carve with a knife I usually always do the back or the bottom part first you know it helps to get somewhat of a symmetrical shape or a cross section in this case And if you're doing it like me and carving towards your thumb, well, word of warning, be careful because you will end up hurting yourself if you are not very experienced with this. Uh, it, it does require a little bit of um, experience and, you know, the know-how to uh, exert um, the right amount of force as you're carving it towards yourself or you will end up hurting yourself that's for sure Take a little bit out from the from the bottom of the of the mouth. I'm actually probably gonna leave this to be somewhat of a flat shape, so that it's actually uh, it works better on water. You know, it makes the lure to have a zigzag sort of action, and that's what I'm actually aiming to do with this type of floor. Mm, I think I'm gonna start to sandpaper it. And like before, this is uh, grid 60 and I think you probably get to use something like 40 even, but I probably wouldn't go um, 
more tougher uh, sandpaper than that. And you know, like before, I'm just checking it uh, from time to time, you know, just making sure that it's uh, somewhat of a symmetrical shape. probably want to spend um, most of the time uh, doing this uh, sanding thing. I think I'm actually going to take a little bit more out, but I'm not going to show that since this is going to end up being extremely long if I do that. Okay, next time I'm going to start to cut the um, template for the guild details um, which I will be tracing out with uh, pencil later on. And this is just to you know help to get both of the sides uh, exactly the same way. And uh, I'm using a uh, very small carpet knife but I guess you probably could make do with exacto uh, knives or uh, surgical knives and things like that, they would probably work as well, but I just prefer carpet knives since I just find them to be much more sturdier than than any of the other kinds. And, um, uh, somebody uh, actually asked me uh, how I do my stencils and other templates and this is pretty much the way I do every single one of them. So next up I'm gonna start tracing out the guild details um, with my pencil and using these templates as a guide. And my apologies with the terrible camera angle. Uh, I didn't realize while filming this that uh, my hand would be in the way. But I guess um, you don't really have to see it uh, in order to, you know, understand what I'm doing here. But, of course, it would not hurt if uh, you would actually see it. And uh, most of the um, details that I had on my uh, template, I'm actually uh, gonna sort of like use my imagination where they would be leading, uh, especially underneath the throats, since um, I didn't make the uh, template long enough for that. But it's sort of like you have to. Um, be uh, logical when doing this and especially if you're doing something that's supposed to look uh, somewhat realistic. And that's pretty much how it should look like. And now I'm gonna start doing the other side. Now I'm gonna start uh, 
preparing for the actual carving. And I just do that while um, cutting along these um, pencil details that I actually did uh, earlier. And you just um, apply uh, right amount of pressure. Uh, it's actually kind of hard to um, um, explain how much uh, pressure you should be exerting on it, but uh, I guess you just have to uh, play around with this and uh, you, get, you get a feel for it later on. Um, after you're done a couple of hundreds of <laughs> lures. And of course, like every kind of detailed uh, work that you might be doing with a knife, um, you really should take um, enough time. You don't want to rush with this, especially if you're doing a, uh, let's say, uh, uh, like a casting master um, that needs to be as perfect as it can possibly be. So of course you you don't want to you know screw up, especially on this stage, and definitely not on the next one either. Okay, I'm pretty much done with this. Alright, um, let's get started with the actual carving. And as you can see, I've actually done the other side already. And now I'm gonna show you how to do the other one. I usually always uh, tend to start with the uh, head or mouth in, in this case. Uh, I don't know, it's just I guess it's a logical way of uh, doing things, but you really don't have to do it in this order. I just always prefer to do it like this. And, uh, start from the end of the nose and work my way back from there. And uh, I guess when you're doing something that is uh, as detailed as uh, something like this is, um, you really do have to be very careful with your blade. And definitely have a very, very sharp, sharp blade. Uh, you don't want to do this with a dull blade. It just doesn't work. And uh, I think I'm gonna have a flat surface for the place where the eyes are going to be. Uh, I don't think I'm actually going to do eye sockets for this one. And, uh, so I want to have it flat. I guess the first time you would uh, would try this or something similar to this, uh, I guess you probably would find it very tedious and probably kind of hard. But after you ha you have a couple of baits under your belt um, with different kinds of carvings, uh, you you do get better at this and. Um, I'm not saying that I'm good at this yet, but uh, I'm still learning, so... I mean, I'm not terribly bad, but I'm not exactly a master of it yet.
do some details on the mouth or upper part of the mouth. You know, just to have a little bit of definition for it. Sometimes it's actually good to use your um, blade's edge uh, to scrape off uh, any excess that you might be leaving, um, especially on, on the more um, smaller parts, like I actually had, had there a little while ago. There's not really much to say about this. Um, you know, just watch what I'm doing, I guess. Uh, this scene is uh, pretty long, so uh, I don't think I'm gonna be doing a lot of commentary on, on this. And as you can see, I'm doing this very very slowly you don't want to rush things especially when you're doing something that's as detailed as uh, what i'm doing now i guess you have have to you know have patience with this sort of thing And I guess uh, being a little bit mad doesn't really hurt either. And uh, as you're doing the carving, you, you start to notice where um, you just have to take a little bit out, you know, make it look a little bit more flatter than, than it is, so that you don't have any kind of um, uh, bumps on it. So, just so that it ends up looking a little bit more realistic. What I'm actually doing now is uh, I'm pushing the blade with my thumb and actually stopping it with my other one.
It's starting to look pretty good. I think I'm almost done. I think a um, few more spots still. Let's give them a little bit more definition. Hmm. So now I'm gonna start uh, doing some details on the gills and on the guild rakers to be more exact. Um, I've actually done the same thing to these uh, like I did with the um, other details, uh, which is uh, I've actually um, carved the uh, outlines first and now I'm just actually sort of like carving them out. And uh, my apologies again with the terrible camera angle. Uh, I really wish that I have a head camera, which would be really fantastic for this kind of stuff, but I really can't mount my DSLR to my head, so, yeah. I mean, that would be funny. But I would probably have terrible neck pains after that. And I don't want to suffer for my um, YouTube videos. But yeah, this is pretty much what I actually did on on the gill plates. Uh, even though you can't really see the uh, blade doing its work. Let's do the other side. You probably can see this a little bit more better. Since this is kind of a very small details. I, I often just use my uh, blades ed edge to um, scrape off the excess um, wood that um, usually end up, ends up staying there. Uh, it's uh, especially good for these, uh, this stage of um, gill plate carving. And of course, uh, like said before, you kind of have to know your tools and know how to exert the right amount of uh, pressure on it so you don't screw up things. Which is uh, sadly the only thing that you can do for that is uh, practice a lot. Now I'm just um, making sure that um, every one of these um, details that I've done here are uh, uniform and have roughly the same sort of thickness so that it looks um, somewhat realistic. I mean, it, it's not ultra realistic by any means, but at least it's uh, kind of close to it. Uh, I mean, close enough to, for me at least. Mm 
And I think I'm pretty much done with this. A little bit more from here. Yeah, I, I think I'm done with this. So yeah, this is how it should look like. Alright, now I'm gonna um, finish off the pre-sword um, wire slot that I did earlier. I, I guess there's not really that much to say about this. Just try to keep the uh, saw blade as straight as possible and don't screw up. <laughs> That's pretty much it. I'm gonna turn it on the other side now. While you're doing this, you kind of have to look uh, that you don't saw too much. So that's why I'm, I'm actually checking out constantly that I don't saw too much. Which you can't see, but I'm actually doing that. And I guess it's pretty much done now. I'm, I'm happy with this. I will show you guys how to do the wire harness as well. And what you need is uh, round nose pliers and a pair of uh, regular pliers. Now, my apologies that you can't see the first uh, bend that I do here, but you will see the other ones when I start doing those. So it's pretty much the same. Let's straighten it out a little bit. Uh, usually always um, fit the wire to the slot um, after I done a bend. So that it just uh, fits on the on the slot nice and snug. And, um, let's do the center hook tie. Mm, that looks looks about right. Yeah, let's bend it from there. What I do now is uh, I I place the wire to the slot and um, press it down, and then I take my round nose pliers and place them to a spot where I want to make the bend. I bend it a little bit and straighten out and then I just uh, use the round nose pliers and my fingers to just um, put it in place and straighten it out a little bit. And then I just bend the uh, wire to, to its form. And let's do a fitting again, so that it's good. It looks about right. And then let's do the rear one. And like before, I just make a little bit of a bend and then just uh, bend it out with uh, my round nose pliers afterwards. Then just use a hell of a lot of force to actually make it somewhat of a round shape. And then just uh, straighten it out a little bit so that it's straight. And let's fit it again.
it looks looks um, pretty good. So now that we have uh, the slot done and the wire harness done, I'm gonna start epoxying it inside the lure. And the epoxy I'm using is just the regular run of the mill um, five minute epoxy that you can get from pretty much any kind of hardware store. And you just mix it very thoroughly together, making sure it's mixed well. And I just uh, start pushing it inside the lure. I'm just making sure that I have the whole slot covered. And let's put the wire harness on now. I have to a little bit take off the excess from the either side. And uh, again, my apologies with the terrible camera angle, but I guess this is not very. Um, vital information that you need to know so it probably doesn't really matter that much what i'm just doing here is just adjusting the um, wire harness that it's uh, in the right place and now i just start pushing the uh, epoxy on top of the wire harness now I have these two uh, pieces of balsa wood that I'm just pushing them inside the slots. Just uh, a little touch that actually makes the lure look a little bit more nice and you don't have to um, deal with the epoxy run runs that it, it usually ends up uh, happening. I guess a lot of trout guys uh, especially use this sort of method over here in Finland. So I've actually already sanded the balsa wood from the wire slots. Uh, now I, I'm gonna start sealing it with this stuff. It's basically a plastic body in a spray can. And what's great about this stuff is that it lets you have a detailed bait like this but not lose any of the details, which is great. But the downside is that it smells absolutely horrendous. So you want to do it outside for sure. So thanks guys for watching this extremely long video of mine. And subscribe and keep those likes coming and you know all that jazz so until next time